when your perception starts to, you know, um, be affected in your, your how the way people view you, that's when things start to get a little bit shaky for you and your career. So now we're on the wave of little baby's trash. Get him out of here. He fell off because it's like it's just a mountain of things piling on at one time. You got the tours being canceled. Boom. Kid Leroy says, you know what? Your stuff getting canceled, so I'm out of here as well. Then you got the snippet, or this song snippet being uh, released, which isn't that great of a snippet. He dropped a song called Go Hard this year. That one didn't really take off that much either. The only songs that have taken off for him that came out in the last year is Friday, uh, Right On, a little bit, in the song where he samples, what was it? Did he sample Pound Cake? He, he sampled some Drake song. Uh, it might not even be Drake's original song, but sampled some song that was... Um, Done by Drake. So I don't remember what it was called. But regardless, it's not looking good for him. So academics has something to say about it, um, right, as, as we would assume that he would. So he said, so now y'all want to jump on the Lil Baby fell off. Lil Baby making the same song over and over again, Train. When I said his album last year was mid, y'all said I was D-riding Hater, who only said that because he dissed me. What the F changed since then? Why y'all turning on Dominique? He said, uh, this shows me how fickle fans are and how they have no real opinion. A few headlines unfavorable to Baby, and now he fell off. But when he dropped the music before, y'all ate it up and co-signed it as hot as it was trendy to do. Now that he hugging white dudes and his tour flopping, he um, he fell off. All right, so then he continues. Also, it's interesting how the gunna angle is playing out online as well. I've seen these fly-by-night fans say Thug is trash because they felt Gunna put out a better album. Now they knew narratives that Gunna better off without Lil Baby. Most fans love storylines, not music. So I will respond to that. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a storyline for the Gunna and Young Thug thing because Gunna did drop a better project than Thug. The reason you can have that, that, that discussion between Gunna and Thug is because it always be gonna put out an album by himself, right? No features, no nothing. Thug put an album with the biggest artists in the industry. And as you can see to this day, it's been out for like three weeks now. It really has no lasting impact. Gunna got a record off the album, F You Mean, which is still doing great, has entered the top 10, is now higher charted than uh, Lil Durk's All My Life featuring J. Cole. So you, that's not really a narrative. That's People are really picking what the better music is in that aspect. And then with Lil Baby, people saying that he's better off without Baby, I mean, it's bad. like they got the, obviously their biggest songs are together, like Drip Too Hard, uh, the song they got with Drake. But I think Baby can still do good without him. I think what Baby's going through right now is a perception thing. And it could be a music thing. It could be the same issue that the Baby had. You hot, you on fire, your sound is new. And he, he even mentioned this in a couple of tweets or above, but I'll just mention it right now, where people feel like, the music you're making is the same music of songs that are great, but these songs aren't as good as those songs. So I could see that, I could see that narrative playing out, right? Um, like I said, I still think he's one of the, the more talented of the new school people. But like I said, when your perception is fractured by the fans, ain't really nothing you can do to try to mend that. Like, even with the baby, I don't even think the baby is making worse music than he's ever made before. I just think there's a disconnect between him. And, and fans and thankfully for him like I said that tow truck driver uh, put the shake some song and put it on TikTok and made it go crazy because that you know made the record relevant and made people want to listen to the record and made people play the record but regardless um, he continues y'all trying y'all best to do to do little baby what y'all did to the baby this is why you need a solid core fan base the rest of these fly by night fans will switch up on you because you're getting sandwiched hugged on at an all white party or they heard your tour not selling I got the remedy for little baby Stay far away from Michael Rubin or keep it off camera. The optics don't look right. The internet making it sound like you want some get out stuff is ruining the facade needed for fickle rap fans to buy your music. Now, I said this, not this exactly, but I was asking, I was posing the question to y'all. I was like, did Lil Baby's career start to dwindle once he publicly started hanging out with Michael Rubin? Because the same thing similarly happened to Meek Mill. Now, like I said, I like Meek Mill. Not Expensive Pain, was it Meek Mill's best album? By far, no. It was probably one of his worst albums, in my opinion. But regardless, the same thing happened. Now, he might have a, uh, maybe Academic's point in this is, your perception is the cool street dude. Well, you're like a street dude who's like, he's cool. You ain't overly gang gang. You're not overly op killer. You're not overly all that. You're just a cool dude from the streets. 
You got that perception. The ladies like you, the guys want to be you. Let's say it like that. But when you get up with the white dude and you huggy huggy, smiley smiley, being your true genuine self, it doesn't translate and sell well to the fans. I'm assuming that's what he means by stay away from my room. Because like I said at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff when it comes down to music, especially when you're talking about fickle fans, not core fans. Core fans will love you through and through. Most, most likely core fans, they'll ride you the wheels follow. But fickle fans, and that goes for any industry, all has to do with what the perception of you is at that moment. That's all it really comes down to. So secondly, go on a crazy feature run or drop a few tapes. Bar for bar, you're one of the best rapping. These fickle fans will forget all this hate they're giving. Also, that Merch Madness song deleted from YouTube is terrible. Yeah, the Merch, okay, he did just drop that Merch Madness song on July 7th, and that wasn't the greatest um, record. I, I feel like that was like a that was like a Michael Rubin, like, fanatics type promotion record or something like that. But anyways, third, you got to re, uh, stop remaking Whoa and It's On Me. We gave you a pass with Right On, but the formulaic songs ain't cutting it. Your cadence for hooks was new for a few years. Now all it does is remind us of the most successful versions of it. Put somebody else on the hook. Fourth, stop rapping about not falling off uh, while the whole conversation about you is you fell off. You don't be fall off allegations by just rapping about falling off. Maybe add a little substance or something. Um, so this is, he said, fifth, look around to everybody in the studio. You preview the song. They're all liars. They should never let the engineer, uh, let, let this let the engineer's headphones. Then he goes on to say, six, consolidate your tour. Uh, you could clearly do arenas in some places, but money type for a lot of people, these PP post fans who broke now and everybody and their mama is out doing arena tour in the next six months. Keep in mind y'all charging the same price as Lola, Rolling Loud, which has 50 different artists that you can go to. If Lil Baby adopts even three out of six of the advice I just laid down, by spring 24, y'all gonna act like y'all never was hating him, period, once he drops a new song on a yacht with 15 white girls and him doing donuts on the jet ski. Now, like I said, I agree with uh, some of the things as far as remedies because as far as Lil Baby, at this point in his career, he's fighting... I don't want to say he's fighting the perception, but because if we're just going off singles he's dropped over the past year, like I said, I like the It's On Me album. I get a lot of people didn't like it. It's still selling well. I don't know if it's still selling well because maybe people say it's bots or it's this or it's that. I don't know. But the Merch Madness song, that ain't the greatest song. The Go Hard song isn't the greatest song either. So he's like 0 for 2 so far this year. I don't know how many features he's done this year, but I understand the sentiment that Academics is trying to give uh, little baby and even when we get to the tour stuff because I see Sammy the Bull says do you think Dirk faked the health scare so he can cancel his shows that are not selling that way he can avoid the fall off narrative before it starts because he wants that narrative starts it's down um, yeah I mean th th that's that's the thing the, the fall off narrative is um, the fall off narrative is a narrative about perception that can really harm and dismantle your career because a lot of times, like, these artists, like, Warder says not the greatest song is an understatement. Tell the truth. He's been, yeah. Like I said, those songs are good. They're not, they're not, they're, they're not little baby quality music. But the thing is, once you get that fall off narrative latched onto you, it's really hard to beat that narrative. Look at having to Roddy Rich. Roddy Rich dropped arguably a classic album with, um, please excuse me for being antisocial, had a couple of hits on that album. Obviously, the box was number one for like 12 weeks. It was his biggest year. He's going crazy. He waited about a year and a half to release a new album. He drops the album. It doesn't sell well. The hype isn't there. Now he fell off. He's trapped. Whatever, right? That's his narrative. And then he dropped the, the mixtape series that he had before. People liked it. But I still feel like Roddy Rich, regardless of how you feel about him now, he's still not the place that he was up in that exact moment. Because he was on the he was on the cusp of being that new hit maker guy and it kind of doing it all because you got to think but Roddy Rich before he before he released excuse excuse me being antisocial he had balling even though it's DJ Mustard's record the only person that's actually on the record is Roddy so you're going off of balling and you drop your album you got a couple hits on there then you got uh the box goes crazy you wait a year and a half because like why do I got to drop again this album's doing great it's got hits on it I dropped Rockstar with the baby I'm on that record that goes number one for six weeks why do I really need to engulf and put it put out more music and then when he does you know they say it sucks it's not the same Roddy he fell off that narrative goes and then you know you kind of get wiped away right so you don't want the fall off narrative when you speak about Lil Durk in the fall off narrative you could say like I said I don't fall off like the album is still cool it's not 7220 it's not 7220 whatsoever 
but it's still a cool album. And I don't know how Dirk was selling on his tour. I seen a clip on Twitter of academics pulling up the tour and seeing what was sold. And I mean, if you look at it, it's pretty much some of the shows he was showing were sold out, even though it had still blue markers, but those are people who are reselling. Now, if you're an artist and your, sales, your show is sold out, but there's people trying to resell, do you care? Because at the end of the day, you're still getting paid for those tours. It's like we spoke about on here when we saw my little baby's tour, and then we looked at Uzi's tour. Uzi seemingly isn't doing arenas everywhere he's going. He's doing arenas in cities he most likely knows he could sell out. Obviously, Philly, obviously, New York. I believe he's, I don't even think in Houston, he's not even doing the Toyota Center, I don't even believe. And I believe in LA, he's not doing the crypto arena, he's doing the forum. Now, I don't know how many people the forum can hold. No, well, no, the forum is still a big place. The forum can still hold 17,000 people. So it isn't too much different, I would assume, than the crypto arena. Maybe the crypto arena is just, yeah, the crypto arena is 20,000. The forum is 17,000. So, I mean, Uzi could probably most likely in L.A. get another 3,000 people to come out and, and rock with his tour. You know? So, uh, Warner says, I think fans are used to having top-tier artists out, uh, dropping albums consecutively. Um Artists dropping, I think fans are used to having top tier artists dropping albums consecutively that are unique and different, like Travis and Ye. Um, but you gotta be to be to be fair, you gotta look at the type of artist these guys are. Like what street artist has been dropping multiple albums that are unique? Like we're talking about Travis, right? Who's experimental. He's actually a producer. He actually like we're talking about people who actually know how to create their own music. You know what I'm saying? Travis can create his own music. Ye can create his own music. Um, Kendrick, I don't know if he could create his own as far as like being on the drums and you know doing hi hats and all that type of shit. But they're built for that. These street guys, these are street guys that started rapping. They're getting money and they're trying to figure out along the way. These aren't the most musically inclined. If we're gonna give a musical IQ test, I wouldn't assume they're on the levels of Yays and Travis's to be even be able to be to try and be experimental. The most experimental they are is maybe I'll try to sing a little bit during a record, like with Lil Baby. Like, hey, like that's his experiment. He ain't gonna go Travis, yay, type level with crazy samples and crazy voice loops and crazy voice. Like, they're just not gonna do that. And honestly, the best thing for Baby is to get a record with one of the big, big guys again. <laughs> Drake, you drop a little three-pack, throw me on there. I got to go crazy. Like what he did with uh, Once and Needs. I got to go crazy. The record that he did with J. Cole on J. Cole's album off season, it was crazy. You need stuff like that. Look at what 21 Savage is doing. 21 Savage is hitting the spots. Boom, boom. Feature here. Boom with Drake. Feature with Young Nudie. Eggplants. Boom. That's a good little feature. Boom. Got some Show Metro booming album. Boom, boom. Obviously, I got the collab tape. Her loss. So now, I ain't going to lie for 21 Savage. I'm expecting the album to be good when he drops his own album, right? Savage Mode 2 was great. Uh, I Am Greater Than I Was was great. Her Loss, he was great on there. I feel like there's a lot of pressure on him now to be great on his next album. Can he do it on his own? Because right now, to be fair, he's having good features, right? But it's him and somebody else on another song. Drake and him was on the album. I'm not saying Drake carried him, but they're on the album together. So now, after all that, feature, 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 Drake album, boom, 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 okay, cool. What can you do by yourself? And he can do it, obviously. I am greater than I was. Savage Mode 2, great albums. But the, now I feel like the pressure is on because I feel like now he's in a spot where he's never really been. People saying, oh, he is a rapper of the year last year. He's a top rapper this year, and he barely even dropped it. Like, he's getting all these, these accolades and things now. So now when he drops, what's he going to do? Because let's be honest, 21 Savage is a... Not, I don't even consider that a co-headlining with Drake. How Drake be doing his tours from what I see is Drake goes out first, he performs, I'm a little bit tired, let somebody else run out there like with the Migos, like, hey, I'm out, I'm out here first for about 45 minutes, then the Migos come out do their little shit, and then I'll come back out again. I have even believe with the Future Tour, he was out there first, and then Future come do your little, you know, five, cents, however many songs, and then I'm going to come out again. Do we think that 21 sat? Like, who are the artists that can actually sell out arenas? That's the real question. We spoke about this a little bit last time. I saw a Twitter thing, and they said the only rappers that can sell out an arena are Jay-Z, like sell out, complete sell out. Because these guys could do arena tours, but who could sell them out? Jay-Z, Eminem, Drake, I think it was Kendrick. It was like five people. It was like five people on the list. I got to find this list. Uh, rappers that can sell... I 
Okay, so. But. Bro, this nigga said chance. <laughs> I don't think this this wasn't the one I was looking at right here. This wasn't the one I was looking at. But this guy said, um, this guy said, Kendrick, Kanye, Drake, Cole, Hove, Eminem, Wayne, Tyler the Creator, and maybe Chance. Who in their right mind would think that Chance the Rapper could sell out an arena tour in 2023? An arena tour? I mean, like, it, Chance the Rap, like, I get it. Acid Rap, Coloring Book, um... What else? Did he, what other? What else? Did he dropped. Like I said, the perception around Chance is not good. I don't. Even, you think? Why? Do, why? Do, why? Do, I see people saying that. I see a lot of people saying like Cole is crazy. Why would Cole be crazy? If Cole has a loyal, dedicated fan base, he's put in a lot of years in the game, dedicated to going a bunch from city to city. Why would we think J. Cole can't sell out a arena tour? Why would he? Why would he not be able to sell out arenas? I know my. I'm talking about, like I said, because Igbo said he does arenas. Like, yeah, because some of these new guys can do arenas. We're talking about a complete arena sellout. I don't know why you think he can't do it. If I was to pick two out of the names I just named, I would say, I would say J Cole can sell an arena more than Tyler Creator can. You know. Like if I'm gonna pick out two names of of those type people, I would say that he can more than they uh, than Tyler can. 